Hi, we're back. We're going to do a series of videos covering all four corners of the car. Um, and today, in today's video, we're going to cover the right front. So before we get started, if we could take care of a little business and subscribing, liking our channel, um, help us out here, you know, by doing that. If you subscribe, it helps YouTube direct these videos towards your guys' uh, you know, it gives you notifications, it directs uh, videos towards you. So if you can subscribe, like, and hit that notification bell, then it helps us to do more videos. It probably gets me a little more motivated, um, and it helps you to know when they're out. So today's video, we're going to start with the right front, and we're going to cover, um, you know, certain areas of the right front, um, left front, right rear, left rear, and we're going to try to keep them, you know, kind of uniform in the same. Uh, so today on the right front, we're going to start with spring rate. Uh, spring rate is, in the front of the car, is just kind of taking a spin, you know, here a little bit, um, and not necessarily in the best direction. So we've been a little, uh, I feel like, low in every class in spring rate. Okay, and I know a lot of times we think if the late models do it, we can get away with it. But, you know, when we're talking about a car with a bump stop versus a car without a bump stop, then we're, we're talking about different types of applications. Okay, we can lower the spring rate in the car and make the car better to an extent. Okay, but it's not the answer. And this is what we've done, you know. So, I mean, if... If a 400 pound spring is good in a modified, well, you know, or so wouldn't a 100 pound spring be like super great? Okay, well, it don't work that way, but we're forcing it to try to work that way. You know, I see it guys all the time. Uh, I'm on a 400 pound, 450 pound spring, but my car is hitting the ground. What do I do? Add spring rate. You know, why do these things? Okay, if you're decreasing your spring rate is making your car turn better you ain't got enough rebound okay so you got to kind of use a little logic in the deal um but so in this scenario on these four corners we're going to do um we're going to do a b mod a usra b mod chevelle clip um standard lower and we're going to start the right front on a 550 spring okay and I'm going to pick a 550 spring because I feel like this keeps the, the car off the racetrack. Okay, you know your car. You know, you know what you've done to the car. And I dive, dive. Um, if the car's getting on the nose hard, if it's rubbing, you know, different brands, uh, different chassis companies are all going to be a little different on the nose. So you're going to know that when you're on a 500 or a 450 that you're on the ground. You're going to know your race tracks and how rough they are. Okay, so in this scenario, we're going to start with the 550 uh, on the right front. Okay, I feel like that's a good spring rate. I feel like the right front spring rate um, sh needs to match the valving and the shock. It needs to keep the car off the racetrack. So if the car is hitting the racetrack, you ain't got enough spring rate in the car. Now, sometimes at the racetrack, it could be compensated with load. But right now we're going to talk about spring rate. We're setting the car up. We're getting it ready. So let's start on a 550 spring rate. Uh, in this scenario also, we're going to start with the right front being softer than the left front. So a 550 spring rate uh, right front is where we're at. Uh, the second item we're going to talk about is wheel offset. Okay, Wheel offset is pretty common. Uh, two, inch, two inch offset may be pretty common on um on the right front okay uh a, a big wheel offset or getting the right front out there or adding wheel spacers to the car or say even an inch longer lower which is not legal in our scenario here of a b mod but anytime you move the wheel out the, the and the wheel gets further away from the spring the rate's going to go down at the wheel but the time you spend on the wheel it's going to go up. So everybody wants to do, you know, this 
this leverage thing, this longer arm uh, leverage thing. Well, that's all true, but it does not build rate. Rate turns the car. Wheel load turns the car. Okay, so we cannot decrease the wheel load by decreasing the spring rate and make the car turn better. So we have to have a reasonable rate. Um, we need to be on, um, you know, a decent wheel offset. So don't get crazy on the wheel offset. Uh, number three, ride height. You know, the third thing, we need to set a ride height, okay? So we need to establish a decent number. You know, here again, if we're on the racetrack and we're racing at six and a half on a 450, what do you expect? Okay, lowering the ride height is another track fix. Lowering the spring rate is a track fix. These are track fixes. This is what you do when you got nothing else you can do. You're at the racetrack and you're going to swing at it a little bit to make it better. But don't let make these things become a standard for your race program, okay? So right height. We're going to start in this scenario at seven and three quarters. And we're going to call an eight inch, like the standard, you know, maybe factory standard right height, you know. And our, our racing standard right height at seven and three quarters, seven and seven eighths. So this has kind of been the standard that the cars were built around. Um, so seven and three quarter ride height. Okay, ride height is important. There's a lot of front car, back car stuff based off of these ride heights. And when you just go lower them down, you're creating a problem or issues that you may not be able to overcome during the season because of the ride height. Okay. So if your ride height, if lowering your ride height made your car better and your car turns better, well, it's telling you you need to find the problem, fix the problem, okay? And ride height's not the problem. So seven and three quarter ride height, standard Chevelle lower, 550 right front spring, US or AB mod. Um, wheel load. Now that we kind of got that, you know, that stuff set, we can come in and get a wheel load. So are we on... Your wheel load, are we on a chassis, a chassis manufactured uh, wheel load, or are we on your buddy's wheel load, okay? So if the chassis guy says, well, I kind of want you on this wheel load, he also needs to kind of tell you what spring he wants you on. So how much spring rate do you want me on to be on this wheel load? Um, I quiz your chassis guy a little bit to give you, uh, you know, not just a right height wheel load number, but a wheel load number at, say, 1 inch, 2 inch, 3 inch, 4 inch for that car. So we're talking about a 550 spring, standard Chevelle lower, 7 and 3 quarter ride heights. There should be numbers available for this car. Okay, so you, you, you got your ride height, you got your spring rate, you go in, you put your load stick on, and you check your load number. And let's say it's 660. Uh, let's say it's 650. So we're 650 on the right front. This is our wheel load. Okay, if if uh, the down number is too high, um, I mean we don't want to be, you know, 22, 2200 pounds at four inch number on the modified because we're not going to be able to maintain it. Okay, so um, we don't want to do that. So if if we are a high wheel load number in our down position, we need to understand what's causing that high wheel load. Just changing spring rates and say, okay, now I'm on a 450 um, doesn't always work. You know, it may give the car too much velocity getting there and we can never keep it off the racetrack, even though we're at our desired down wheel load number. You know, so you need to establish these numbers. You need to make sure that they are uh, correct for this car, uh, for that spring rate. So do your own wheel load numbers. Put your load stick on there. If you don't have a load stick, you don't have someone you can borrow one from, that's fine. You're not, you're not being left out in left field because you don't have a load number that you can talk about at the racetrack, okay? Scale your car. If you're racing your car without a set of scales or a load stick, then take your car somewhere and get it done. There's just plenty of people out there that will take your money to do this service. Okay, and then determine whether this service that you've gotten from these people 
is a good value. Okay, if it was overcharged under, which generally I don't see it as overcharged, I see it as underdone. So if it's underdone uh, and you don't feel like they did a good job, go somewhere else. You must scale your car. So if you don't know how to scale your car and you got scales, well, I think, I mean, this is, scaling your car is not the easiest job you'll ever undertake. And when you first start, it, it's more than a chore. So you'll have to learn, you know, to scale your car. But it is something you need to do uh, more than once a year. And it's definitely something you need to do more than once every two years. Okay, just because you have load sticks didn't doesn't mean you can replace your scales, okay? It's not a tool to say, okay, I no longer need a scale car. You need a scale car. Um, you need to load stick it. You need to understand your extended loads, your ride height loads, uh, and your compressed loads. So that was wheel loads. Toe. We'll set toe. For most of us, we're going to set toe in static height because we don't have the proper tools to set it at dynamic. So we're going to play around more this year at dynamic toe. Um, if your bump is all set, your toe at, at static should be just as good as your toe at full down. Okay. If your bump is not, if, if your bump steer is not set correctly, then this is not going to be the case either. So if you if you know that your bump is off um, or you feel like maybe it is, then pull your car down and set your toe. As you pull your car down, you'll see the tires toe out and you'll know your toe's wrong. Okay, so or your bump uh, is wrong. Uh, so set, set your car at dynamic and then when your car is down. Now, the problem is is you're going to set it at full four inch thinking, you know, this is the attitude and the posture of my car. And generally this will not be the posture of your car. So there's where I may get and there's where I will get and there's where I will run. And you need to be realistic about this. So you may have to change your toe over time um, because you got it wrong to begin with. If you're setting it at dynamic. OK, if your chassis guy says that your bump steer is spot on perfect. Um, you know, compare, casually compare your bump steer bushings to others, uh, whether you're on a pinto spindle or three-piece spindle, they take different bump bushings, okay? So keep an eye on that because they will be different. Um, our next deal will be uh, the most complicated one of all. So we've got the front end set, we've got the right spring, we've got the right height set right, we've got the toe set right, and on the, on the right front, I'm going to put the toe on the left front. So we'll discuss that more on the left front when we get there. Um, now we're into shock valving. So the shock valving is going to be the biggest um, and the most time consuming thing. It's going to be the biggest fear of, you know, setting the front of the car um, is going to be your shock valving. So um, shock valving, we're on a US Ray B mod. Um, 500 pound spring in the right front, uh, standard lower two inch offset. Uh, you're going to need to probably start in the 12 rebound area. Okay. Um, not all rebound, not all builders are going to do the same thing. So just because I say 12 doesn't mean diddly. You know, um, Joe over here might be, be calling that number a 10, and Fred over there might be calling it a 15. So that number is is the high speed number. It's only a representation of something that they're doing. OK, for us, we we start um, at about a 12 valve. That's the generic high speed number. The low speed numbers in the zero point uh, may be a little more proprietary, but you're going to have to have some zero in this shock to make this shock work. OK, um, zero is often misexplained. So when we first started explaining zero, it was the amount of force it took to move the shock. Okay. And under standard uh, conditions, this was pretty accurate because our zero was around 50 pounds. And when you push the shock in, you know, you have a little bit of resistance, especially on a gas shock. 
but when you're zero points 500 pounds, well, now you know this isn't true because if it took 500 pounds to move it, none of us could move the shock. Okay, so uh, zero point is not the, the amount of effort it takes to make the shock move. Okay, what, what it is, 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 is uh, the, the complicated term, and this is probably not the most scientific explanation, but the complicated term would be it's, it's force generated in the rebound stroke, okay, if we're on the right front, greater than the bleed in the shock. So when the bleed's in compression, it's got, it's got more energy in the oil than the bleed shim's going to produce, and this creates zero, okay? That's not that important. Okay, bleed is important. We're going to discuss bleed next. Bleed is important, but zero, the, the easiest way for me to explain zero is kind of like, if you take a 200-pound spring and you set it here, it's 200 pounds. We can compress it two inches. Now, it has 400 pounds of load on it, but it's still a 200-pound spring. We can compress it another inch, and it becomes 600 pounds. So every inch we compress it, we gain 200 pounds of load, which would be uh, comparable to zero, but it's still a 200 pound spring. It just has more load on it, okay? And that's kind of how we do our zero point. Uh, we do zero point between 200 and 800 uh, on a standard um, 14, valve, uh, 14 valve build. I'm thinking 14, 15 valve build. But it's the same, we just we add preload to change to zero. We leave our bleed the same because bleed's imp important. As you add zero to a shock, in most cases, the shock functions harder, okay? Uh, it may not function correctly, uh, depending on the builder, but it should function harder. So a, a 300 uh, should have more return to the left rear than a 500. Or let me say it this way, a 500 will have more rebound than a 300. OK, uh, we do uh, describe those shocks as zero point shocks, you know, a 200, 300, 400, 500, 600, 700, 800. Um, we do describe them as a right front GF 300, for an example. Um, that's how we do describe them. OK, bleed. Bleed is highly important. The amount of bleed is highly important. Some builders like to have a lot of bleed. Some builders like to have no bleed, okay? And in both of those cases, there's a time that they work extremely well, okay? Normally, you're going to have to have a certain amount of bleed, a certain amount of zero point, and if that don't work, you're going to have to increase your zero point, or you may have to increase your valving, or you may have to decrease your flow, um, if you're a bump stop or a non-bump stop car, then your bleed and how much bleed is allowed in the car will change. If you're a bump stop car on a Christmas tree or a foam style bump will be different than a um, polyurethane bump or a donut bump. So bleed is very important. Bleed is what allows you to push a shock in. And bleed is what allows the gas pressure on the shock to push it out. Okay, but don't be confused with the rate of return because if we lower the gas pressure in the shock, then the rate of return will be slower. Does it mean we increase the rebound? It means we decrease the gas pressure or the returning force. Okay, when you put it in the car, the spring, the force that the spring generates will push the shock back at a certain rate. Okay, bleed will allow grip. So a uh, certain amount also bleed will make a car tight under throttle. So uh, when I say allows grip, it's going to allow grip to the right front, to the left rear. So uh, we need rebound. We need rebound done properly in the shock. You need to match the right front rebound to your spring rate. So if you're on a 500, well, let's back it up. If you're on a 450, it's going to take less rebound. If you're on a 650, it's going to take more rebound. Okay, And the rebound 
you need the, enough rebound in the car to keep to get the car through the corner. You need enough spring in the car to make wheel load and to keep the car off the racetrack. So I generally start with the spring load. If I if I can't keep the car off the racetrack, then I need more spring. Okay, based on my load numbers, I can't you know and my spring rate, I can't generate a real high load number and expect my rebound to hold it in place. Okay, so. You don't want to overlive that and you don't want to underlive that. But you do need to match your rebound and your spring rate together. Okay. Sometimes they'll talk about frequency in the spring. Um, for dirt guys, I'd say let's just not worry about that. But there is um, uh, frequency, you know, between a less active coil spring and a more active coil spring. Um, is kind of, uh, the best way to understand it is the stiffer the spring, um, the quicker that spring will return to zero, okay? So the frequency in it, I don't know if that's considered higher or lower, but it's less. It, 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 it'll, it'll vibrate the frequency, it'll have a movement in it, but it'll come back to zero quicker because the spring's stiffer. Less active coils will come back to zero quicker, Will, will require higher, that's kind of hard to say, will require higher uh, rebound rates. Okay, so rebound, very important. In order to have good rebound, you're going to have to have some kind of zero point. You're going to have to have some kind of uh, amount of bleed. We will do videos on both zero point and bleed uh, throughout the season. So keep your eyes open for that. We will do them. Uh, bump stops, uh, since we're talking about a, um, a uh, USRA B-Mod on a Chevelle frame, then we won't discuss bumps. Um, chain slack. Chain slack on the right front is a crutch. It can't, it's a racetrack thing. can make your cars good. It's going to tighten the car up on the rear tire, but it isn't really not going to make your car turn better. So if you're going to run a chain, um, on the right front, in the slick, I'd probably run it at one plus, one inch plus. Um, so that kind of covers the, the nine points we had for the right front. Um, right height, well, let's go back. Spring rate, wheel offset, right height, wheel load, uh, toe, shock valving and in the shock valving we discuss zero point bleed overall valving um, however your guy explains it you know you need to understand it if you can't understand it ask him to explain it again if he gets upset with you um, and he probably will you have to you have to know how to ask okay he needs to build the tail. And if he can't tell, then maybe you need to find a different shot guy that can explain it to you better. Uh, because at some point, you don't need to be a scientist about shocks. You don't need to be a shock guru. But you need to be able to express to your shot guy when your car is tight, when your car is loose, and whether you're shearing traction or you're just not making enough grip. If the shock isn't performing correctly uh, through rebound, if you have too much rebound, not enough rebound, you need to be able to express these things to him. And if you can't do that uh, because you don't know where you're starting at or you don't know the terminology or he don't know the terminology, then maybe it's time for a new shot guy. So um, these are the finer points of the right front. We're going to do the left front and then the right rear and then the left rear. So look forward to them videos, guys. As always, let's go out, let's drive hard, let's win races, uh, let's go fast. God bless you, we love you, and we'll see you next time.